This is the shape wrap assignment. And to be able to do this assignment, you need to be able to draw forms, right? You need to be able to draw like decent boxes. You need to be able to draw spheres, cylinders, prisms, and so on. The basic idea of the assignment is that we're going to take um, grids And we're going to fill those grids with shapes, like so. And this is just an example. It can be any simple shape. And then we're going to apply that to a particular form. Okay, so here I'm just going to estimate it. If you want to, you can use the X method and actually kind of grid it out properly. But this is kind of about being loose. I'm gonna switch colors here to kind of like, in a second, to make things kind of clear. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically take your texture and bring it over onto the form. And just like you did there, you're just gonna to try to hit all the sides. And if it's imperfect, that's okay. So you work your way through applying this texture all the way. Or, well, it's not really a texture, it's applying shape. We're leading up to textures, basically. And then what you can do is you can kind of come back and if you want to use another color you don't have to use another color you can give some line quality or line weight to particular parts of this texture You can make the ones in front real heavy. Make the ones in back pretty faint, and you can kind of go in between. You get the idea. And if you do this well, the kind of the grid pattern that you put down to, to lay this out is gonna kind of disappear. And you'll be emphasizing more of the actual shape within the grid. Let's see what happens if you take that and apply it to a sphere. So to do that, you probably will need to be able to draw a decent circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then um, if you remember the sort of straight in, straight out circle assignment where you put a little point on there, go straight in, straight out, straight out, straight in, and so on, right? Straight out, straight in, straight out, straight in. Um, and you kind of do that loosely. That kind of gives you some, gives you the ability to create your latitude and longitude lines on here pretty readily. So you can go straight in, straight out, straight in, straight out, straight in, straight out, straight in, straight out, and then you come back and you go straight in, straight out, straight in, straight out, straight in, straight out, 
straight in, straight out. This gives you a loose grid to work from. Then you can go back and you can put these sort of distorted shapes onto the grid, right? So we're not doing textures yet, but we're setting us setting ourselves up to do textures later, right? And here I'm just using circles because they're easy. You can come up with a more complicated one for your project or assignment. Okay, and then this one, it's going to make a huge difference if I kind of create some line weight and line, and line darkness effects with it. So what we're playing around with is anything you can use to make the front come forward and the back to recede, right? I'm gonna get real faint as we go around to the sides and to the back. Let things kind of drift and end. Now if you got if you want to get real if you want to get real crazy with it, you can start turning these into eyes or some junk. To start to be funny with it. So you could take this sort of tent looking pyramidal or not pyramidal, rather um, prismatic form. some grid lines through it. You can even curve the grid lines if you want. And you could do a diamond pattern, right? You could run it through pretty quickly and create something like decently interesting based on a diamond pattern. And so on. You could even, once you do this, you could even put value in between them and literally cover up the grid and leave yourself with a nice diamond pattern. And you can do this pretty casual like I'm doing and you still get a decent effect from it or you can get more careful with it and really make sure the grids are perfect, you know. You'll probably want to be more careful with it. Anyway, there you go. You get the idea. The next thing you can do is um, combine that with things like the ribbon form, right? So the ribbon form is basically where you just take an S-curve and then you run that growing as you come forward. And this one's really easy to subdivide. Where it's flat, you're just going to do squares. And then as it turns, they get tighter together. And you just work your way towards squares where you get flat. 
So it feels like they get bigger and you're emphasizing the, the flow. Then you can put whatever shape you want in there. Um, let's say I want kind of like little, little boxes of like these sort of scaly arc things. I could do that. This, this could allow you to like, I don't know, create an archway or something like that, some kind of pattern in a very simple way, especially if you're composing and you don't want to deal with linear perspective. Boom, there you go. And then, you know, you can always do things to emphasize it, right? Just mostly just tweaking line weight and how dark lines are. Such that they get fainter as they go back. They lose feather touch by the time you get to the back and the front. Super thick, super heavy, super dark. If you've also done the sort of crazier straight in, straight out project, that can be really fun too. Um, where you take a basic cylinder and you do a sort of loopy pattern to it. So what you do is you go straight in, straight out, and you make S-curves on each side. And you do it on the other side too. Just be real casual with it. And you can do any kind of pattern you want on here. Remember, the pattern also doesn't necessarily have to stay within one particular grid. You know, you could do it like this where it goes over two. So um, we'll go over two and just see what that looks like. And we'll start from the bottom here. And you're gonna have to kind of like make your pattern bend as you go around in space to kind of accommodate for what's actually going on. There you go. So I've created a fairly complicated pattern that I can't even really see because I've drawn faintly and in red. So I'm gonna go through with the dark material. I'm actually gonna introduce a bit of overlap too. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and overlap into the next area. I'm going to come down, I'm going to overlap. I'm 
So what I'm using with the overlap is basically the sort of T intersection, right? I'm creating these little intersection points where one thing goes over the other. And it gets kind of confusing. So to keep track of it, what I'm doing is I'm focusing on these, these T intersections, right? More than I am anything else. Okay, and then to kind of like improve it, make it nice, what I need to do is bump up some line weight here in the center, right? And I'm going to just choose basically anything that's in the center. And I can kind of use some interesting arcs and things like that as I go along, bumping up the pattern. Now this one's really complex and it's kind of like time consuming. But and so this is something you would only want to do if you've like gotten a handle on it already. Um, so it's maybe not the one to start out with, but it's possible to do if you just think through it. Um, there's other simple ones you could do, like you could do this again and just have, um, you know, circles go through. So I recommend just keeping it simple um, because it's going to be effective. So you can go through and just do the circles and it's still going to work and it's still going to be interesting, right? And you'll get an idea that the circle doesn't get complete on the edge which is kind of what we want, right? You only get a part of the ellipse by the time you get around to the corner. So the pattern distorts, right? Your cylinder can either be vertical or it can be horizontal. We'll do a horizontal one just because it's something different. Okay. So what you're going to do is go through and create a series of arcs going back more or less paralleling your edge, right? Then you're gonna create your sort of center area as it goes back, and then you're gonna subdivide, getting smaller as you go towards the edge. Okay, so let's do circles because they're simple. And what you're gonna notice is that your pattern changes and distorts as you go around, and the pattern gets more intense as you reach the edge. Right? Okay. So you see how the pattern kind of just squashes, right? They get closer together in a two-dimensional sense. Um, the other thing you can do is you can take this and know what you know about lighting and go ahead and light the thing. So you can put your Shadow core down. Your tone down. Throw in a little edge in the back. With some half tone. Put in some shadow inside. Bump up the contour. Remember to be not so even with it, right? Use the core tone for this back contour to make sure it kind of holds and turns around. Then what you can do is you can come in where you can still faintly see your texture. You can kind of bump up some line weight, darken it as if you could still see it. And here we're headed towards getting this stuff lit. 
So just distinguish it a little bit from that tone, be in good shape. So now we're thinking of the actual pattern itself as having a tone. This stuff sets you up to, to do various scales and stuff. Like, you know, this can be done very small on tiny objects, or it could be blown up and like this could be part of a colonnade of a building, like if you're trying to draw St. Peter's or something like it. That's basically the ins and outs of the shape wrap assignment.